You guys ready? Oh yeah. Let's do it. Boobon Street. Boa Boa Street. Boo Boo Street. <laughs> what are we doing? That's friends, Cajun. <laughs> He's speaking Cajun. Oh. Who that there holding up on my sneaker? Boa 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 Street. Boo 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 <laughs> Movies on Bourbon Street, that's what we think. Okay. Hey everyone, this week we're talking about Bourbon Street. <laughs> hey, is that it? Yeah, I didn't have time. I, we're not going to talk about week. the Bobo, the Bobo Street. Do you want to do an intro, just uh, an offensive Creole accent? Get on, 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 get Charlene, you do one. Get a gator up and up. Oh, oh, brulee. I don't know. <laughs> nope. Nope. Can't do it. Can't do an you accent. suck. Can't do an accent. Oh. Bon Tom's Brulees. <laughs> Get on down there. Uh, download that uh, no account so for taste. So dumb. I did, I then we did talk about the Bubba Street. Home of Sean Patton's beer belly. Anyway, come on down Bubba Street. Get yourself a nice crawfish. Then that jazz. Ooh. That been real loud. Bubba Street. We're going Let's to crawl. down through the on Bubba Street. Going no account for My down. favorite podcast ever. They get on there, the canane and the shame, and they go, whoo hoo, crazy like a sand boat down the swamp. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hal, you're good with words. You know that, man? I think the gym is dumb. Did Rachel was, walk in the room? Of course I've eaten a Baconator. Man, if you ain't doing CrossFit, you can get cross You're shuffle. right. A long burger's not the worst idea I've ever heard. That's your sitcom right there as a, as a, as a Mr. Fix-It-All who just can't fix his heart. We will not be defending Atlantic City. No accounting for taste. If it's something that somebody loves, let's try and celebrate it instead of uh, shitting on it. You believe we've had seven months without an NFL game? I know, I've just been yearning for it. Well, good thing that's over. NFL is here, and DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is giving you a can't-miss offer for week one. Download now and use code NAFT to sign up. New customers can take home $200 in bonus bets instantly just for betting five bucks. Five bucks to get $200? That's crazy. That's code NAFT only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. Oh, man. All right, buddy. Bourbon Street. Blah, blah. We are it. Can't, no, I don't know why I want to keep saying it like that. I'm I, sorry. If we're, I'm let's sorry. just, right now, <laughs> let's just go with this and say we're going to f- Slide in and out of this offensive accent yeah. the whole episode. <laughs> I am not making apologies for it. I'm enjoying it the whole time because New Orleans, as I've said a thousand times, is my favorite place on earth. And I even love Bourbon Street, even though I would not want to hang out there 99% of the time. <laughs> I, I still love Bourbon Street. Yeah, I, I mean, it's been New Orleans is like, you know what you're getting. If you go there without knowing what you're getting into I'm, I, that, a bit of that's on you yeah you can't you can't be sitting at a cafe on bourbon street and have a yeah. brass band go by and be like i'm trying to read like there's no like you i can't believe people are drunk here yeah like no you you fucked yeah up. you fucked yeah up. i would say this for parties bourbon street lives up to the hype like you have fun on it like i don't want to yeah. be there when it's nuts but I will go on it with like you or Sean Patton or half, like a half dozen friends, yeah, and just go get like one or two giant sugary drinks, and then go somewhere else and just kind of. God damn! I can it, like man, I love taste them. it now. I can taste it. It's in my mouth now. I'm just like, oh, hell. I love, I love it. The hurricane, I, sweetest thing in the world. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. It's like, you know, it's you're, like, oh, ooh, like I'm having a visceral reaction to the idea of like one of them sugary drinks. I and mean, I like, I like tiki drinks. Don't get me wrong. But that's, yeah, that's kind not of the same. tiki. That's not, 
That's not Tiki. New merch shirts coming from that, North Carolina. That's a, somebody, somebody stole, somebody looted a 7-Eleven, got their slurping machine. I mean, some of the, And figured fucking, out how to throw Bacardi into the mix. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I don't think it's a rum that nice, honestly. <laughs> so, yeah, what's I, up? Uh, Parrot Bay. I like bur- Do you have any personal experiences on... On Bourbon Street? I mean, we've been down there. I've been down there a bunch. I can't think particularly about Bourbon Street itself, more French Quarter. But I've always, I think my my buddy Marco reminded me of, it wasn't it wasn't on Bourbon Street, so forgive me here, but we went by like a, like a hot sauce. You were sauce. in the quarter. Yeah, like a hot sauce, like Pepper Palace or something, which it's all touristy yeah. stuff, whatever. But we're in there, and they have like samples out to try with tortilla chips and this is yeah, the yeah. hottest sauce. We're dipping a little tiny corner of the tortilla chip in and trying it. Like, wow, it is really hot. And some sleeveless dude comes in with his wife, you know, like, no, nah, no, nah, I love, I love hot stuff. And like shoots it. And then you see him just go like, ha, woo, yeah, that does have a ha. Huh, huh. And it got to the point where the employees are like, all right, coming back and sit down. We'll get you a milk. Like he had to just go in to their makeshift. <clears throat> You know, I love that. Like, at, love listen, after it. Katrina, we're all familiar with some sort of first aid response. So like, come <laughs> on back. Let's can't have you walking out in the street like this because you can't see right now. But just crying <laughs> all over his Harley Davidson. That boy having a top. heart attack from that hot sauce. Yeah, roll out some chicken bones and a couple of dice. Save his life. <laughs> <laughs> that boy go to paradise if you ain't got a paradise. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Oh, you're going to blend right I, in when you move there. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be I'm fucking I'm going to Oh, I'm did already you, prepping for did it. Did you ever go in high school? Like I while well, you were I know Dallas is a lot further. I know Houston isn't that far of a trek, but uh, Texas, I don't know. I never went. I never went. Um I didn't go till I was probably like 24 to okay. New Orleans. But I did uh it was very strange. I recorded my half hour in New Orleans. Yeah. Comedy Central, and I was talking to my mom right before I did it, and uh, it was the uh, she goes, "Oh, your father and I went there one time," and I was like, "Gross." Uh, <laughs> uh, also, but it was the only time I remember her like talking about my parents, uh, like th- her relationship and her courtship, like, and it, like uh, not nicely, not the only time, but like. A romantic thing they did. Okay. Together. Yeah. It's like it's one of the if I and maybe there's I'm sure there's more, but I don't recall it. But but it's like I mean to me like New Orleans New Orleans needs no defending. It's the, I think it's the greatest mm-hmm. place on earth. But but like uh even New Orleans is that part of the South that is you get why it's romanticized. Yeah. And Bourbon Street is the ugly little scar that's kind of sexy in the middle of New Orleans. <laughs> like, that's what it, like, I, I love it. I don't know what it is, dude. I will go there, even though I know it's, and I mean, I go there a lot, a few times a year, at least, you know, and yeah, I mm. will end up on Bourbon Street at some point, and I don't, I like the gardens on the patios. I like, I like uh, Pat O'Brien's. I like, I don't, I don't care. I like to do it. I like to get the drink, get fucking cracker smashed. Yeah. And then just go out and eat oil. You know, like it does not. It's that place is so beautiful and so stimulating, even with piles of vomit and homeless guys aggressively asking you for dollars. It is because people are still having a good time in the middle of all of that chaos. And that says something. It is <clears throat> drunken chaos. I mean, d- during the daytime, it's just. Like when it's nobody's little, out, when nobody's wasted, but they've hosed all the vomit down to the sewers. It's like it's like when they turn on the lights in a theater and you see everything that's uh, on the fucking floor. Yeah, it's it doesn't smell yeah. good. We it's, uh, I was down no. there with oh, Rojo Perez was there one time. We went to some diner way at the end. Like I think that's like the gay part of the quarter. Okay. And we're in some diner and like just middle of the day, you know, just hung over trying to get some food in us. And there was just, uh, just, you know, flamboyantly gay gentleman that was the server there. And just, he, he takes our order and he's just in like the back of the restaurant, 
by himself and he just put a hand on his hip and everybody's just sweating. He just put his hand on his hip and just said, just to the universe, he just goes, Oh Lord, I just want some dick. (laughs) Like just (laughs) willed it, just willed it into the world. I hope he got some. I hope he, he said that was some. He said that from such a true place, not desperate, but just I, just hopeful, but honest. Yeah, honest. Lord, yeah. I just need some dick. That well, is, I hope he got it. Truly awesome. If that's how the secret's a, supposed to work, then that man got his dick there. Yeah, I I love that. <laughs> Lord, I mean, yeah, yeah, I like, I love, I love the, I love one of the things I do love on Bourbon Street is when a homeless person is like. I bet you a dollar. I can tell you where you got your shoes. Yeah. And then some tourists are always like, where? And he goes, on your feet. Pay up. Like, yeah. it's, it's fun. <clears throat> it's a mess. Don't, for sure. Don't stop and, and watch never a musician be... unless you're going to pay money. Yeah. I like that too. Honestly, that's a real, that's a valuable thing. Like, I saw a scam. You know, like the guys that freeze in the silver paint, they just stand there. I yeah, saw yeah, yeah. somebody just said, like, apparently it's one of the scams. That they just put, it's just a statue. And they would put it up. It's just a mannequin painted silver with the box out. You're like, oh, my God. He won't budge for anything. Like, at that point, like, you're impressed. That's like a magic trick. They're like, you got me? Yeah, uh, it's like, it's like, like. <laughs> take, it's take like the money. fourth act of the prestige. Yeah, like, take some sure. money. Take some of my money. You got me on that one. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's like, it's a little. It's a nasty ass street, but it is it's fun. It's a and, nasty and you can go, ass street. But the thing is, is one of the things I genuinely like about it is like you can duck off of it into like a quiet bar two blocks away and then and go back to it. Uh, what's a quiet bar in the French quarter? Well, you're not quiet, but less bad. Yeah. Shout out to the Aaron Rose. They always recognize me when I'm in there, and sometimes they give me a free drink, and I like that. What's the one with that? That's just a bunch of toilets. You ever go to that one? I don't know. Let's call it Sean Patton. Called, Ironically, this will be one of the few episodes Sean Patton hasn't called it and left yeah, a fake I think voicemail. It's called for. like Throne Bar or something. That's awesome. Was it? What's the bar in the quarter that is like literally the world's smallest graveyard? Like they're zoned as a graveyard and they just have urns filled with regulars that have died <laughs> like up behind the bar. That just sounds like a threat from somebody. I'm about to make your yard the world's <laughs> smallest graveyard. <laughs> like, I, like, I think, Charlie, that, I think that happens if you walk uh, two blocks in any direction off the French Quarter at night. That's there. That that's a strong spot. There's some rough spots around there. Charlene, did but, you ever go there uh, when you were partying? Oh yeah, of course I did. Um, Coco yeah, I mean, spent quite yeah. a lot of time there. Once I was in some random bar, and some guy said to me. Uh, I'm going to fuck this up because it's kind of complicated. Uh, sometimes you got to do what you got to do to get done what you done did. Know what I mean? And then he turned off the uh, neon light and he pulled a pillow out of his bag and went to sleep. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. God bless that city. Good what a you, wonderful buddy. place. Good on you, buddy. Yeah. Sometimes you got to do what you got to get done. Get you know what I mean? Time to get them Z's in. Oh, man. All right. Uh, it's but, the greatest place on earth, New Orleans. Bourbon Street is the skid mark on the sexy underwear. Of New Orleans Parish. It's the it's the main drag. You got to go see that part, and then you can break off into the yeah. rest of it. What are the what are the big bars on Torrance Street? Let's see what's going on here. It's called that bar is called the John, by the way, but it's more by the Marini. It's called the John, and you sit. It's just a bunch of old toilets. That's what you sit on. What a theme! Yeah, I have never been there, but yeah. You may have. All right. It's usually one of those things like you're just so drunk. You're like, this bar's full of toilets. Whatever. God, the amount of people who must have shit in seats. I think they're place. all. I think they're all sealed shut. Smart. They, they learned that once. Yeah. They learned that less than one time. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go to. Uh, we'll be right back. We love Bourbon Street. Uh, but we'll be right back after this word from our sponsor, someone. <laughs> Thank you. 
Can you believe we've had seven months without an NFL game? That is nuts. Good thing it's over. The NFL, it's here. It's back, baby. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is giving you a can't-miss offer for week one. This week, new customers get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just 5 bucks on any NFL game. That's football, everybody. DraftKings is hooking everyone up with game day greatness. All customers can take advantage of two new offers every single game day this September. Check the app to see what you get. Shane, take it. One of the things I like about DraftKings is, say my Dallas Cowboys are on a bye that week, what do I need to make football a little more interesting? If I'm going to watch Jacksonville and Washington go at each other, why don't I put a few bucks on the game and... I'll get a little more invested, even if it's not emotional, which is kind of better than how when it, I get when the Cowboys play. So, yeah, that's nice. And download it now and use code NAFT to sign up. New customers can take home $200 in bonus bets instantly just for betting 5 bucks. That's code NAFT only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net in New York. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resorts. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See dkng.co slash football for eligibility, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. All right, we're back. <laughs> we are back. Way. All right. We're I'm look- back. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at a map of the stuff. But it's all. I'm not even looking oh. at... Google Maps is perfect for never showing you the name of the street you're actually looking at. Um, okay, here we go. Bourbon Street. All right. We got most, uh, uh we got we both have uh t shirts from Lafitte's. Yes, we do. Black in which is the oldest bar in New Orleans or the oldest bar in America? I think New Orleans. I can go okay. get my shirt to make sure. All right, but Cafe um, Lafitte. Well, that's Cafe this Lafitte. Is the, this is the part that's the good and the bad. Clover uh, Grill. Uh, where that's we, where the guy said he needed dick. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. Fears grow that the French Quarter could be getting less attractive due to crime. There's a lot. There's been a t- some estimates show 90% of tourists to New Orleans visit the French Quarter. Well, that's that probably makes sense. The customer that comes here is somewhat afraid of their experience because of what is happening in recent times. The number of guns that has been out on Bourbon Street, and unfortunately, a number of fatalities happen on Bourbon Street. So I think. Okay, so yeah, I guess there's just more rough shit happening there. Some I, I always mean thought it was that kind area. of city, though. Me I too. I always thought it was like a watch like your a, back kind of place. Yeah, I mean, New Orleans is the kind of city like one wrong turn, you're like you could be in a great <laughs> neighborhood, but go left instead of right, and you could end up in a really shitty. Yeah, place I'm, not, and I'm not. I'm not trying to victim blame, you know. But no. it's like no, know where you're going. Don't just be. Uh, you know, well, I can't tell you to not be drunk. You're going to be drunk, but then, yeah, stay around the people. You walk into or, well, my mom. My mom correct about one thing. She's like, "Be careful in the cemeteries because they can rob you in there, and then you don't know how to get out of there." But then you go to the cemetery, and it is like you can't find the exit for shit. So somebody could just rob you and then zigzag their way through the little mausoleums, and you're like, "Oh yeah, I don't even know how to get out of this place right now." The good for well, them. is do you have a particular bar on Bourbon Street you've gone to? I'm looking right now. I don't have like a memory. These bar, I think I've been to Fritzel's European Jazz Pub, which sounds like such a. I could have been at any of these. I don't know. Yeah, I'm. Well, that yeah, that's that might that might actually. I've been to Old Absinthe House, and I've obviously been to Pat O'Brien's. There's no but, Clover uh, Clover Grill is where I went. I remember that place. Yeah, and Lafitte's and, where we and both La, and Lafitte's. Lafitte's. Let's get let, let's get the yeah. a deal on Lafitte's. What's their what, what are they all about? Okay, I'll read it right now. Lafitte's about, about built in 1722. Recognizes the oldest bar in the United States. Jean Lafitte's okay. Breakfast Shop Bar is a must stop for during any New Orleans trip. There's your first time or your hundredth. 
Supposedly, the building was built between 1722 and 1723, functioning as a blacksmith shop by day, hence the name. And the building was a base of smuggling activity by night for Jean Lafitte and his brother Pierre. Wow, do you, that's not so. That's, do you just ignore the amount of bugs that are probably crawling over all over every single thing you eat and drink in that city? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's it's like I think they're doing the best they can with it. There's. I don't blame. For, I don't blame some, that. I just blame like that's the climate there. I mean, but like, well, look, oh, that's just. Look at the cuisine. It's that move for later got a little extra crunch in it. Oh, 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 oh. that what I like. You give, you give me a sandwich that got some legs sticking in it. That's for me. What uh, move, this move for later got a walnut in it? Why does walnut oh. got eyebrows? Um. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't know which bar on Bourbon Street I've been to. I've walked down it. I remember seeing I remember seeing a a very drunk woman barely able to stand up, and then a group of gr- guys go up, and we're all like, "Oh, what are these guys up to?" And all they did like, "Like, are you okay?" And they just got her a chair, and then they left. That's about as much as you want to get involved. I was like, honestly. "No, good. That's good." I yeah. I, uh, I think that, like I mean I Lafitte's is a good spot, and I mean I'll be on the courtyard. At Pat O'Brien's is lovely. Yeah, it's a little, uh, it's a little weird that they make everybody dress in like tuxedos without jackets. But that the, the kind of selling a a moment. You gotta wear a I guess, tuxedo but, jacket in the heat. Well, no, uh, they don't wear tux. They wear like uh, bow ties and like tux shirts and black slacks okay. and stuff. It's very you know white, like white tablecloth kind of service oh, okay, looking okay. vibe. Uh, but then it's outside in the gardens. But I will say, the first time I ever went to New Orleans was for a comedy festival that is no longer going and was pretty much a sham. Uh, but <laughs> we we went to Bill O'Brien's and we were this. I, this is a bit. I think I might have put it on my album. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, like starting in Portland, I didn't know anything about management teams or any of that kind of stuff in show business. And uh, I was talking to these two people there. And I was all lit up, and I was like, "Oh, what do you guys do?" And they go, "Oh, we're managers." And I was like, "You mean like in Arby's?" <laughs> and they were like, "No, like, like comedians." And I was like, "Well, I used to manage in Arby's." And then I just <laughs> walked away. <laughs> I'm familiar with your line of work, <laughs> manager. Yeah, yeah. Hey, manager to manager. Look at us in the biz. Manager to and manager. Then, uh, you guys have you ever Jones. ring up a few uh, too many uh, beef and cheddars so you could take something home? Huh, guys. <laughs> Skimming <laughs> off the top, huh? I, no, Bourbon Street is a wild place, but it's what you're signing up for when you go. So I don't like you can't. If it's not for you, it's not like an open mic at a bar you go to every night, and then suddenly there's an open mic comedy night that's assaulting your ears. You you're signing up for it. So if you have a problem with Bourbon Street, everyone knows the reputation. So the excess is kind of like. Um, that's what you're showing up for. I don't. Get, I don't think you really have a problem with it, like and justify it. No, it's like the original uh-huh. Las Vegas. It's like original Vegas. You had your drinking and your, your yeah. prostitution and all kind of that. Like that jazz was invented there with the skeet up and the boop ops came we together. All, we all love that jazz. That Louis Armstrong get in there and <laughs> play that bone. Uh, oh, laugh. I don't. Hey, Louis, what are you doing in there playing that all night? We're just impersonating Sean Patton, impersonating his relatives. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. Uh, Marty, would you go for Mardi Gras? I don't know if I, I think I'm past that I point have in my been. life. Oh, really? I have been. I would go. I would go with a group during Mardi Gras. Like I would go with like, yeah, like a half dozen buddies or whatever. I would do that because I, I want to be able to break off and do what I want, and I like. Uh, I heard once that the quietest day of the year in New Orleans is the day after uh, Fat Tuesday. Is <laughs> actually oh like, sure nobody is out. Yeah, and I, I bet that's the day you can just see war stories on service industry people's faces, <laughs> like like they all took the beach in Normandy kind of vibe. So I don't. Do you think that? <clears throat> I bet the idea of camera phones have ruined the boobs. I got in trouble. I took. Uh, I told you what happened. I was being drunk, and I 
was holding somebody's phone and I just like pointed it down my pants. Just drunk. New, no. New Orleans drunk. Oh, and then... She's a comic. She, does, she does a joke about it. She told me about it already. Because then my friend's, oh, like, really? my friend's like, that's hilarious. Give me that phone. And then just found her mom's phone number and sent it to her. Oh, I know who it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we can say. Yeah, Amy Shanker. Yeah. She does a bit about it. Yeah. I've been like, oh, yeah. yeah, I'm ashamed of that. She's like, ah, I thought it was funny. I'm like, I didn't send it to your mom. I, I didn't do that part. Yeah, I don't <laughs> sent it to you. It doesn't I feel, don't. it still doesn't feel better. <laughs> I didn't send it to anybody. I was. It was her phone. I don't know why. Listen, I have no excuse for this. I have no excuse for this other than shit faced in New Orleans. Drunk. Yeah. So that yeah. feeling, the the remorse I feel for doing something like that has kind of colored my attitude towards that city. I get that. Here's what I will say. If you were going to New Orleans and getting drunk on Bourbon Street, a dick pic ending up on your phone is a relatively small infraction to some of the things that could happen. So... Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you're coming off as a hero, but it's not. It could be. It could be much worse. I mean, yeah. Here's a whole street that, up until these phones were invented, were just based around uh, exposure. I'm just trying to le- relive the glory days. Yeah, and assault. And, here's and, a yeah. taste of old New <laughs> yeah. Orleans. Yeah, I mean, I God, I can't imagine like. <laughs> Look at this little tugboat coming up on the river now. Uh, <laughs> He's going to go show his. What? That's TB trying to get on the mighty Mississippi. That's your tugboat, your PP, your TT. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, <it's on> brûlé. <sighs> it, re- it must oh. be hard to go back from that attitude. Here's a parade. It's called Bacchus. Bacchus. Oh, that's a Oh, big it's just. Sin and booze. Like, it, uh, yeah. The Bacchus brew, we should have had Sean on. <laughs> do this. Trust me, he's, he's, he's talking about it. He's talking about New Orleans to somebody right now. <laughs> <laughs> he is a little You leave that boy on your bed. That old Sean Patton alone. He a, he a delegate to New Orleans for all of them. God, it's 98 degrees out and the humidity is 100%. I sure could go for some... <laughs> I don't know, clams and boiling butter. (laughs) (laughs) Julie, when was the last time you were in New Orleans? Um, When your taping happened. Oh. For your half hour or whatever. Wild. Yeah, it was a long time ago. I got. Yeah. Jesus, what is it? It's It's uh, six years. Yeah. Let's talk about, okay, so there's crime. We know there's crime. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's also a to-go cup in New Orleans. Related? I don't know. But maybe the fact that if you're walking (laughs) around with a plastic guitar full of booze and it's empty, you look like, you uh, you know, what's that, uh, fool and his money are soon parted, soon separated, whatever that phrase is. Um, (laughs) I do appreciate the to-go cup and the workaround that they can sell you daiquiris in a drive-thru. As long as the straw has not pierced the I, lid to the drink, I loopholes. love all of that. How many legal, like just legal? I love, I love a. It's like a, it's like one of those laws when you're like, well, gambling's illegal. Well, then on on land, and yeah. Then you're like, well, we're gonna put it on a boat. God yeah. damn. Like I love that shit, and that is the spirit of that sea. It's just. Like, Can you imagine a law not getting passed soon enough to stop somebody from? making a whole <laughs> boat for a casino like <laughs> oh we got it in dry dock dry dock all we need to do is sign these papers we got the slot machines in we just have to sign it all we have to do to sign it is to stop this show you, yeah, we got like, yeah what is being a judge in new orleans like well there's either just <laughs> full full murder or somebody Tried fucking a sewer like grate, you know. Or you're like you're like there's some uh, you're somehow you're ripping off billboard signs or you know, like you're <laughs> defending like weird shady ass case. There yeah. is a a show on Showtime called Your Honor, starring Brian Cranston, where he's a judge in New Orleans. Oh, is that what that show's about? Yeah, yeah. The first season is pretty good. I 
you, do you ever meet Sean's friend Darius? Probably. Great guy. Yeah, but he was like, he was. I was like, oh, there's. Like, he's from New Orleans as well now, and I, and I was just pulling his chain when I go. I go, oh yeah, there's a new show on Showtime with Brian Cranston's a judge in New Orleans. He goes, is it good? I was like, well, it's kind of crazy because he'll just be like, I sentenced you to seven long years of making gumbo in this penitentiary, <laughs> and he was, <laughs> and he was like, what? Like he actually believed it because I, I guess. <laughs> he was like, you've been shucking oysters for your whole life straight to hell boy now you gotta clean up after all the parades and he legitimately thought that was a thing for a second and I wanted to keep it going but I think there's a thing with New Orleans and Bourbon Street maybe in particular way like, when television films in that city or a, a movie films in there they're like well we have to show somebody being cliched New Orleans to like the nth degree of like with any place where a location is one of the characters yeah you know but like it, svu and an episode of svu is not going to go by without somebody like yeah i saw that guy <laughs> i saw him come out of there at 2 30 <laughs> like that, that's if, if yeah if the place is if the if the location is as detrimental to the show then yeah, of course they're going to do that I, there's much, warehouses yeah. that just hold floats there's float awesome. storage. There's a float storage. <laughs> That's awesome. You think that. they could do something else with it in addition <laughs> to float storage? Well, what would you suggest? I don't know. It's like, I mean, I guess if there's like a homeless population to weather, like, but it's a f <laughs> yeah. it's float storage. Oh, here comes a hurricane. Hey, homeless people, crawl inside this giant rat that's made of paper mache. Yeah, I, I know what it's what called, but it, it, it does go. not do that at all. <laughs> We're going to go to the floats. We're going to float. Yeah, what's oh, the problem? Man. We got all these floats. Oh, guys, <laughs> I hate to break it to you. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, I don't know why they're called that either. They're clearly all on wheels. I, these are just <laughs> land-based vehicles, and we've been saying we just been saying it like this for years. I think. Oh, gee. Okay, so you got your food. Okay, you got your. I mean, a lot of these are. We're doing more New Orleans like than specifically uh, yeah. Bourbon Street, Mo most uh, gay-friendly city in every red state. Uh, not tough to imagine that. With uh, what the rest of Louisiana might have going on, yeah, <laughs> truly, no difference. Yeah, I think it's um, Bourbon Street. It's fine by me. I don't spend all my time on it when I'm there, but I will go there, get a sugary ass drink, and then regret <laughs> it. Like, like Sean and I last time we were there, we're so loaded, and we definitely were on Bourbon Street for a bit. Yeah, we stayed at his friend's place in the quarter. And I woke up the next day aching in a way that was unfamiliar to a hangover. And I like I was like, I need to go check and see if he's alive. And he like, it was like someone shot him out of a can and onto a wall. He was like laid out in his underwear. Yeah. And his shirt was like halfway off. God, it was like uh, oh, Yeah. What a great city. What a great time. You can get offered moonshine on the street. Yeah. <laughs> and it's delicious. Not the only, not the only thing you'll get off. Legally, or you just know a guy? Sure, I just know a guy. The guy that, <laughs> the, guy that had the pillow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Why don't we just jump ahead to the callers? Because I feel like we're we're defending the whole city and we're kind of off base a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's like you know what you're getting out of Bourbon Street. Go. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of. I love a muffaletta sandwich. I do. Mm. Yep. I. It's one of the things. You know. I. You know. That I miss. Will you my current will you, diet? Oh, will you break I'll, a meat valve for it? I, I might. I might, but I got to be careful. If I break for every city for the thing that's good there, I'm fucked. I'm just back to eating. Mm. I'm just back to eating whatever. Yeah, that's a good point. And a muffaleta. If you break it down, there's nothing exceptional about it. It's that somebody thought to put those things together. Really, it's that olive tapenade. Tapenade. Yeah. Tapenade. Tapenade. Yeah. 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 I got some of that in the up. fridge. I'd uh, spread that on a towel, fold it over. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. 
<laughs> okay, we're which gonna is, go. Which we'll is exactly right. what a muffled it probably is to some people when they're that drunk. Like just <laughs> yeah, throw two spoons of uh, <laughs> th- throw two spoons beat. of tapenade in his old sock and give it to him. He won't know. Uh, <laughs> That's that oh, good focaccia. God. You got to bite real hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're gonna take a break. We'll be right back. Let's just jump on over to the callers. And we're back. And we're back. Kyle's always fun. He's a good time like Bubba Street in the middle of my ground. Come on now. Charlie, hit that old Alexander Graham Bell telephone invention. I remember when my daddy got his. Okay. I didn't know everybody on Bourbon Street had Hello, cerebral my palsy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. Sorry. Hello, my mm. name is Annie. I live in New Orleans. Um, I've lived here for 10 years, and I've probably been to Bourbon Street two times because it is the worst. I hate everything about it because I don't like having vomit or urine on my shoes, and I don't like taking sh- jello shots out of plastic syringes, and I don't like hearing the same cover band play 1999. That's it. You moved to the wrong city, lady. <laughs> Sorry. And you go, you sweet girl. Why you be like that? Call down Bubba Street. Papa Jack show you a good time. <laughs> I don't want to stop talking like this till we hang up this podcast. Oh. You hang them up, podcast? It's like wet yeah. overall? Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Well, that, I'm sorry that. for that. It's sad that you don't like any of the things that <laughs> New Orleans is about. If it wasn't for the vomit, Maybe. that city would sink into the swamp. It gives us a sense of buoyancy. <laughs> All that regurgitated crawdads that turns into concrete yeah. keeps the city up. Yeah, keep it real nice. So keep the levees, nice, levees yeah. are made out of frat barf. Yeah, them, all them little crawfish, yeah, they, they, they pepper across the street like a nuts. <laughs> What? God. I don't know. You ever eat crawfish? It was good with it. I fucking love crawfish. It's delicious. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Love them. Like lobster. John told me one. A bunch more work. But a lot more work. Yeah. Do you yeah. suck the uh, brains out of it? Uh huh. I do. Yeah. Patton told me his dad one time they did a boil and his dad just put a lobster in the bottom of the pot. And he goes, That's a big one. When they poured it out into the dish. That's so dad. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Nice guy. Uh, All right, look at the next one. Okay. Guys, this is Courtney calling from New Orleans. Uh, thoughts on Bourbon Street. I hate bringing visitors to the city there. Everyone wants to see it, and they are 100% of the time disappointed. Um, it has been like... Ground zero for uh, shootings and such this year. It's it's not a fun place. It smells bad. There are so many other good places in the city to go to. Um, I mean, seriously, you can drink anywhere in the city. You don't have to go to Bourbon Street. That's my thoughts. Thanks. I I I I would say that she, she's right in the fact that it's a great city. I mean, everything you were saying, Shane, like, yeah, this is the dumb tourist part. Go do, go see Hollywood Boulevard, laugh at it, and then see the other yeah, parts of Los Angeles. Yeah, that's my... Go to Times Square, be like, this is hell, and then see the rest of New York City. Yeah. Yeah, that's. I think my, my thing with it is really is that I love New Orleans so much, even the clogged artery that is Bourbon <laughs> Street still has a little bit of my heart. Also, it's not like you're going out of your way to go to it. Yeah. Like... It's right there. I don't... Yeah, and I don't like hang out in the quarter when I'm there. Really, like you know, I just go wherever I go, go wherever I go. But like, yeah. I'll go through it if I'm in the quarter for sure. So, yeah. We got one more collar. One more, and then we go bring this crawl down. I got nothing. I'm oh so sorry. Oh my about god, that. <laughs> you're you're not sorry at all. Yeah, so you just go into full gibberish, and it sounds like it. <laughs> Here's the last one. Hi, this is Rick. Regarding Bourbon Street, I love New Orleans. I avoid Bourbon Street as much as possible. However, it is Times Square with a better soundtrack. 
among all the bachelorette parties, public vomiting, and bad cover versions of Bon Jovi songs, you might be able to hear some good music wafting from a club and find a legendary musician playing a great set that you've never heard of before. Or at the very least, you can have a chuckle as some guy points towards the door and grins at you, which is his silent way of asking you to go inside and be overcharged while observing a live sex show. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your day. This is Tim uh, regarding yeah. Bourbon Street. This guy sounds like he either doesn't get fucked up at all or he gets mm. crazy. And so when he, <laughs> you ever meet the people like when they're sober, they really like try to sound. practicing writing a letter. But you know what, like, people that really do party when they're sober try to sound like they've never had it together more in their life than that moment, because they know in six hours, oh, you're yeah, just going to get, be getting mug shots side by side. Yeah, like, there's a, there's a Nick Nolte level, like, yeah. policing going on. Yeah, that's a good point. It's a real I do declare kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give, I'm going to give it a go. I get what. Everybody, everybody's complaints are the same. The fact that the shooting and crime stuff is a bit scary, mm-hmm. and now I'm less inclined to go there. But I like his point about you might hear some great music coming out of uh, it's. Uh, what do you say? It's Times Square with a better soundtrack. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'll yeah. take it. I mean, I'll take it over Broadway Street in Nashville any day. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Look at it this way. To wrap it up, for clusterfuck party streets in all the cities and all the world, whether it's the Strip. Or Broadway in Nashville, Sixth or whatever Street other city. Clusterfuck yeah. party strips is a good subject. <laughs> Do we just save Bourbon Street? Yeah, we got. We I'd say, say Ru- Rush Street in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they used to call it the Viagra Triangle. <laughs> <laughs> it's the <laughs> it's the best one out of all of those yeah. messes. Like I, I think you can say that. Like I party districts. I think it's got more history to it that, like, again, if you wanted to break off like a block over, it, it would be a little more, like you were saying before, it would be a little more quiet than the chaos. You go see it, get your silly drink, and then go see a rest of a beautiful city. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, uh, it's, a, it's aesthetically a more stimulating place than so many of these other, other cities and stuff that have their party strips. I think the heat so, and humidity um, can squash some of the rowdiness. I think it's a bit of a, right. like, a, like a nice like a it, I think it maybe tamps down maybe that's why the crime's high that nobody's sluggish from the weather. Like, we don't <laughs> even, everybody's just full, no, nobody's gonna, full yeah. of rum and they're like nobody's easy targets. Gonna, yeah, nobody's gonna fight back. All these criminals have been sitting at home all night, like just drinking water and hydrating yeah, yeah. to be in a superior condition. Wearing moisture wicking athletic wear, like they're ready. I love this. <laughs> maybe probably not. <laughs> Um. Yeah, that's Bourbon Street. I love it. I'll go. I'll take anybody there, but I'll go to every other place in that city too. It doesn't matter. I like. I I, I agree with our man Tim down there. Yeah, you might see a live yeah. sex show. We should defend those. I don't know. As far mm-hmm. as like naked ladies and all that, seeing that, if I had t- watching two people just go for it in public, I don't know. I just project too much. The pressure it overwhelms me. Yeah. <laughs> It hard, is weird to see. I have a hard enough bl- time if one of the blinds is out of place in the bedroom. <laughs> it's, uh, Kyle Casanova Canaan, everyone. So you're just going in and out uh, like that over and over again, huh? I feel like I would just stand <laughs> next to it like I'm, like I'm ad- admiring machinery at working at its peak potential. <laughs> they might, they all like. Yeah, I'm sure they're all just like same shit, different day. <laughs> like, like, yeah. To see a guy or a woman who just did a live sex show, if you saw them walk out with a thermos when they're going to their car, just <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, like <laughs> oh god, it's a gym bag. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's so great. Well, this has been Bourbon Street. Uh, it was definitely better than Starbucks. Can I go back to just the idea of somebody fully nude being like, who ate my lunch out of the break room <laughs> fridge? It had my name on it. I had mini carrots and hummus in there. 
Somebody called me Jared, fat last I... week. I've been worried about my figure. One of you bitches <laughs> took my carrots and hummus. <laughs> Jared, I know you had my burger because I could taste it on you yeah. when Ew. I was going down on you. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> you don't need it anyways. Piggy. No. <laughs> This has been No Accounting for Taste. You can reach us at 971-259-8302. He's Kyle Kinane across the internet. Check out his new special on YouTube, Shocks and Struts. I am Shane Torres, and you can find me across all platforms at Shane Torres. Shane is a comedian.com, and I have a new special coming out soon. Do you have a name Blue for Eyed it? Mexican. Blue Eyed Blue-eyed Mexican. Blue Eyed Mexican. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. My little tapatio. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we love you guys for listening. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and to all our socials. Uh, it's all, if you put in no accounting for taste, you'll find it. We love you guys. And we should, we're going to start hosting uh, the topics a little more regularly. Because that's all. Oh, yeah. Well, well we, we say we're going to. We say. Mm. Les Bontas Roulettes! It's a <laughs> kitty cat on Bobby Street! Meow, meow! Meow, meow, meow! <laughs>